I see that was a lot of people's favorites. I saw uh, just about everyone singing along with you. If you have your Bible this morning, if you're looking with me to the book of 2 Peter. 2 Peter, the third chapter. And I want us to, uh, to talk this morning. I'm beginning a, uh, a new series. And I want us to talk about, for just a few minutes, about Jesus needs to be on my mind. You know, I, I thought about this as, as I travel around and from uh, here and there, and uh, I talk to people, and uh, there's not a whole lot of people are interested in talking about Jesus. They, they don't want to talk about this or that or the, or the other, but uh, here in Second Peter, the third chapter, and I want to concentrate on just uh, these first eight verses. Uh, you and I need to be mindful. You said, well, when you're talking about mindful Christians, what are you really talking about? What, what does that mean? Well, to boil it down and put it in a nutshell, it is this. Jesus is coming again. Amen. And the Apostle Peter declared here in 2 Peter 3.12, look for that day. And so, uh, I, I dare say, all across America, there are very few people mm -hmm. that get up and say, this may be the day that the Lord comes. And we've still got time today mm -hmm. for Him to come. Jesus is coming again, and here Peter declares in Second Peter, once again, look for that day. And so you and I as Christians ought to be looking for Christ's return. It is a reality. Jesus is coming again and on that rock I stand. Amen. Don't live your life thinking that all things will continue just as they have all of my life. He said, well, you know, people have been saying this for 2,000 years, and but it may be 2,000 and more. But make no mistake, Jesus is coming back. And when Jesus breaks back into history again, things are going to change. So in light of this sure and certain event, Peter asked this question here in, in the same chapter in verse 11. Peter asked this question. He said, what manner of person ought you to be? And so here he just spends this entire chapter describing for us four things that each Christian should possess. If we are truly living like Christ is coming back. But unfortunately, you and I probably can count on our fingers all the Christians all across the country that really believe that they are not living holy lives, they're living just like the world. Look at the churches in America, the emptiness of them. Giving no thought that today might be the day that Christ returns. Mm -hmm. Today might be the day that you meet your maker. And so my hope today in this series is this, that God will push us to examine ourselves to see if we are ready. If indeed Christ did come today, are we ready? And so having said that now, let's begin our our first characteristic that prepared Christians have that are ready for the Lord. And so first, let's begin with our first characteristic that prepared Christians have that are ready. There are several characteristics that we need to prepare. They have a mindfulness towards spiritual things first as they go about their lives. Now, mindfulness means that as you go on about your life, 
as you go about your day-to-day -day activity, that you are aware of one thing. That you are aware as a Christian, this one thing is that Christ is coming again. Today may be that day. So let's see how this, this should shape our lives. How it should shape our day. So let's begin now our scripture reading in 2 Peter, the third chapter, beginning at verse 1. This is the second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, and both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before to the holy prophets and of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this, they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby by the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. And so the first point I want to make this morning is this. The key to keeping your mind pure is to remember that today may be the day that the Lord returns. In verse 1, chapter 3, the second epistle. Beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Man, you know as well as I do that if you're expecting comfort, your wife, she, she starts right then. She's cleaned that whole house from top the bottom, she scrubs everything that can be scrubbed, and then when she is absolutely through, she says, don't you mess it up. <laughs> and so, I said that to say this, that if we train our minds to think that today may be the day that the Lord comes, we need to keep our minds pure we would keep our minds clean. And so having thought about that, and it, it's when we're not thinking that Christ might come today, that Satan has his best shot at polluting our minds. He said, well, you know, I've, I've heard that. Satan loves to hear that. Anything he can do to keep your mind off of this being the day is when we're not thinking that Christ might come today. That Satan, as I said, he has his best shot at us, and there he is able to pollute our mind. <coughs> it's when we're not thinking that he might come today that our mind can trick us into thinking that it's okay. Although the Bible prohibits that. It's when we are not thinking that Christ might come today. That this world can, can seep into our minds and, and these things are not pleasing to God. And I can assure you of this. If we did not know that Jesus is coming today, there would be a whole lot of Christians cleaning up their life. Mm -hmm. If people thought that they was the day, there would be a change in America. So let me give you some examples. According to an article here in uh, 
in Mission Frontier. Uh, some of you are familiar with, with that. But here in their November and December in their, uh, edition, Barna Research, most everybody has, has heard of them for years. Uh, it's a Christian research fund. So I'm gonna share some figures that, that I got from them. You ready? They found that 68%, let me say this again, 68% of church going men, ready for this one, and over 50% of pastors view pornography on a regular basis. No wonder this country is in the shape that it's in. And of all the young Christian adults, I'm talking about the 18 to 24 year old group. They actively seek the poor. Now, if these people knew that Jesus is coming again, and that it might be today, I would imagine that there would be a whole lot of cleaning up going on in their lives. Mm -hmm. Pastoral Care Incorporated, they published a report in 2022. It indicates that 45% of all Christians are addicted to gambling of some sort. 45%. That's almost one out of every Christian. If these people knew that Christ is coming today, I would imagine there would be a whole lot of cleaning going up in their lives. Pew Research and a survey last year. It says that 33% of all Christians say this. They that say that sex in an unmarried relationship where there's some type of commitment to each other is always a separate. Now, if these people knew that Christ is coming today, I just imagine that there'd be a whole lot of cleaning going on in their life. Mm -hmm. But do you know what all this tells me? It tells me that Christians in America are living just like Christ is never coming back. They don't think Christ will ever come in their lifetime at least. But friends, do not deceive yourself he is coming back, and on that rock I stand. We need to change. I've got to believe that Christ may come today. He may come before we leave this building. Today is the day that I will see Christ. I get up every morning thinking this is the day. Mindful Christian think biblical. They run everything through a biblical filter. They do that first before they act on, on something. Let's do 2 Peter 3 2. That's what the Bible says. That you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the Holy Prophets, and of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Now, listen, maybe. Maybe you're not a Bible scholar, but each one of us in this room knows enough about Jesus and his word to filter our lives through what we do know. But I have to caution you, just like the Apostle Peter did. He cautioned the readers, there are scholars. Everywhere we go, we, you will find a scholar who will try to get you to drop that fear. Mm -hmm. you, you, in your own home, you can talk, well, you know, my old grandmama told me that, and her grandmama told her. Oh, it's just been all those years since the Lord went away. He's not coming today. It may be another million years before he comes. It may be. 
So it may be nothing to me in second. Now when you say stop them, you are really talking about somebody that mocks the word of God. Now, they might outright deny the word of God like an atheist. They, they may not do that. Or there might be someone who perverts the word of God. Just like Peter describes here as those that say, well, life is going to go on. Just keep living just like you always have. Life is, is going on. Christ is not coming back. I think it's a fair statement to say this, that the scoffers that I've run into, more often than not, they know something. These scoffers that I'm running into, they do something. They more, they know more than many Christians do about the Word of God. It, it, it just amazed me when I was talking about all the people that are unbelievers, mm. but they can quote the Bible. Sometimes they a little bit off, but they know and they think they know what they're talking about. You know, they they nitpick it. And so I challenge you and myself to know the Word of God just as well as anybody in this country so that we will see their scoffing for exactly what it is and we'll keep our filter up that's what paul tells us here in in second timothy second timothy 2 15 he says study to show thyself approved unto god a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth and so Peter's warning is this, is that those filter steaming scoffers will be found in the last day. Well, the last day, you know, when is the last day? You ever think about that? When is the last day? The last day started the minute Christ went back to heaven. As he was lifted up, the clock began. You know, and I thought about that. If Peter was concerned about these scoffers in his day, how much more should we be concerned in our day? Amen. We are, believe it or not, we are really living in the last day. Mindful Christians keep their lives pure by thinking that Christ may come today. Mindful Christian keeps their lives pure in thinking that Christ may return. Today may be the day that he comes. Mindful Christians think biblical. Keeping that filter always up and then thirdly, let me say this. Mindful Christians do not willfully forget something that they know about Christ and his word. Mm -hmm. So that they might do what they want rather than what God wants. Look at verse 5 through 7. Listen to what the Bible says. For this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in stone, reserved under fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. And what Peter's saying here, Peter says that scoffers willfully forget. Now, Peter's implying that these scoffers knew the truth about the word. 
but they willfully forgot it. Very conveniently. And they did that so that they could satisfy their lust. Now notice what Peter said here in verse 4. That they were walking in their own lust. I think Christians do the same thing. There are times that we know what Jesus desires of us and what his word says to us and we willingly forget so that we can do whatever it is that we want rather than what God desires. And maybe, just maybe, that's the reason so many Christian men are addicted to pornography. Maybe that's why gambling is such a big problem among Christians. And why many Christians live outside the bonds of holy matrimony. So many Christians are bent by willing forgetfulness. And for a Christian, that is a dangerous thing. Because it may just take you down a road that you don't want to travel. Mm -hmm. The mindful Christian does not allow his mind to be taken captive by women or forgetfulness. You see, I need to be mindful of, of three things. First, to live every day as if today is the day that Christ is coming back. He said, there's nothing that can prevent Christ from coming. Everything that had to be fulfilled has been fulfilled. That eastern sky is going to split open one day, and he's going to step out. And then secondly, to keep up my filter based upon what I know about Jesus and his work. And then third, that I cannot allow my mind to be overtaken by willingly forgiving. Heavenly Father, thank you for this, bringing us to this time and this point and to this point. Father, I had no idea what you would have anyone here to do. Everyone here by their own testimony is saved. And if you come right now, Father, we're all going up with you. I thank you for that. But Father, if you have something that you would have anyone do, we pray that you would speak to others, meet their needs of everyone here. Bring us back at the next point of time. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.